Good evening and welcome to Games Master, where it's quite literally December, so technically it's very cold. Here in Atlantis, however, my temperature just keeps on rising. Because not only do we have the second round of our footy tournament, but I also have rather a splendid seafront view. As always, we're striving for credibility on the show. Today is no exception, as we begin with an event called The Boss. <laughs> I don't like being ordered about, so I was more than a little irate to receive an officious letter from someone calling himself the boss, demanding to come on the show and display his game-playing portfolio. Apparently, this character has made a career by beating every boss on every game, including these ups to ups and platforms. Despite his dubious interpersonal skills, I decided to invite him on to see if he can send three randomly picked bosses into early retirement. So, once more, we shake hands with calling credibility as we welcome the boss. <laughs> welcome to the show. Nice to meet you, Dominic. How first, are you? Um, I'm fine. Do you have a first name? Just just the boss. Mr. That's what call Mr. Me. Boss? Yeah, Mr. Boss. Mr. Boss. Why did I call you the boss? I'm just so good on these, you know, games. You can give me a platform game and shit. Uh, hold on, what's ring yeah, yeah, yeah. Hold on. Hello? Goodbye. Yeah, carry on. Who, Sorry who, about who that. Who was that? That was one of my salesmen. Right, it wasn't just a carefully constructed gag. No, 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 not at all. <laughs> okay. Not at all. We've, had, uh, we've had many guests on the show and you're certainly, certainly a guest. Uh, so we're going to pick three. <laughs> yes, hello, I'm too busy right now. Come on, bye-bye. <laughs> right. Sorry about that. Another salesman? Yeah, yeah. I, I thought Plenty all be. on the go. Now, uh, we're going to pick three games at random, and uh, the boss is going to have to tackle the three random bosses. OK, would you like to uh, pick one cigar out of the box, then? And hand it to me without looking at it. OK, the first boss is uh, Final Boss from Star Gladiators, boss number two. The second one is Weird Humpty Dumpty Looking Boss from uh, Knights. And the final one is <laughs> Final Spider Boss from Resident Evil. Those are the three totally random bosses uh, that you picked, okay? Yeah. If you'd like to uh, assume your games playing position. And while I ponder whether the length of the boss's cigars reveals a deep insecurity at the heart of his psyche, we'll go to today's news. Three, two, one, go! Soon to arrive in the UK is Alpine Racer 2. This follow-up to last year's surprise arcade hit is the first game to utilise Namco's new System 33 hardware for improved graphics. The game has almost vertical slopes and massive jumps which were based on my last gold medal Olympic skiing performance. Alpine Racer 2 will be testing games players limits when it hits arcades next month. Those who believe that the truth is out there somewhere will be pleased to know that in production at the moment is an interactive game of the cult TV series The X-Files. On the show's Vancouver sets, filming has taken place of scenes for the game, written by the show's creator Chris Carter, and starring none other than David Duchovny and Gillian Anderson. Expect lots of alien encounters, mysterious locations, and many sad geeks still thinking Scully is very fit, when it's released next March. Beat him up, featuring soft, pansy-looking dancing fighter shock. Obviously desperate to come up with a new fighting game after losing the Mortal Kombat license, software company Acclaim have been using their motion capture technology to develop some new characters to replace Sub-Zero and Cole. Unfortunately, as this rolling demo of the fight illustrates, they haven't quite grasped the idea that fighters have to be hard. <laughs> Okay, today on the show we have The Boss, who claims he can beat any boss in any game available. Okay, we must stress he is a real boss. He is not just some guy we've put in some really dodgy clothes for the purposes of humour. That actually goes to Rick Henderson. <laughs> uh, Rick, have you got any tips for this finely dressed man? 
I should imagine that he'll have to get the five hit combos going so he can do his super duper special move right at the end. That's the only way he's going to beat Bilson. Okay, yeah, we must stress that this first leg of the three boss challenge, Bill Stein is the final boss of the Star Gladiator game. It's very, very tough. Uh, and the boss has chosen to go for uh, Rimgal, very nice name, um, and we hope we can do the best we can. The first leg then of the three boss challenge. Best of luck, boss. Off you go. Okay, we can see uh, Rimgal is the dinosaur guy on the left-hand side. Bill Stein is the huge big kind of robotic knight samurai looking bloke. On the right, you can see the energy bars as usual at the top, and it's uh, not a brilliant start. He's, uh, he's getting a couple of hits and landed on his dinosaur there, Rick. Yeah, it's the actual super hit combos. If you wait for 30 seconds, then you actually run out of the combo, so you'll have to start all over again. Okay, then, well, as we see, his energy's very, very low indeed, as you can see that, but he's coming back a little bit now against the boss. Oh, no, but the bloody Bill Stein, Star Gladiator boss, takes the first one. He's down one back. The pressure's going to be on now, Rick. The pressure's on, and he certainly did not impress anybody previously. He's just did a four-hit combo, but he didn't quite get there to do that super move. He's being a lot more cagey this time. He could do the move. No, oh, isn't no, it? the boss gets him right in the midriff there. This could be current for the boss on the first leg of the challenge. Oh no, he's doing better now though. The Bill Stein's energy is low. We still haven't seen a big flashing move from him yet though, Rick. No, he's playing it extraordinarily cagey. I think he wants to get this round out of the way to put, call it all evens, and then he can go into the special move section. Okay, uh, the time's running out. Maybe he's playing a kind of waiting game now. He knows his energy's higher, Rick. Maybe he's... Oh no, that's oh, good. He's that's picked it. him up by the neck. Teeth around the neck, a situation I've been in many nightclubs, and slammed them onto the floor. It's one bout apiece. Okay, we've been to the third and final bout here. The boss playing the dinosaur Rimgal against the big robotic knight Bill Stein. As we start off this one, the energy's quite literally equal. Rick, what do you want to see in this final round? I want to see him pull off this move. He's a big wuss if he can. I can assure you that, man. He's not actually. Oh, this isn't bad. That was four. That was a five hit. There, did we get a five hit, Rick? He's pushing. There he goes. Oh, that's it. He's biting him somewhere. He's got him in the match. Oh, dear. He's biting on Trump's for dessert today. <laughs> <laughs> he slams the back. Bill Stein's energy is very low. This should be a formality now for the boss. As long as he gets away from the edge, he's got it. That's said He moves in for the kill. Bites him in the midst of again. The boss takes the first leg. 2-1. OK, we're going to set up the second boss for the boss. And remember, he is a real boss. Now he's about to try the fat, weird, Humpty Dumpty guy on uh, nights on the Saturn. Right, Rick, any tips for the Fat Weird Humpty Dumpty boy? Yeah, certainly. Every time the Fat Weird Humpty Dumpty girl, has, it girl? Uh, has a brassiere. OK, but then in, right, in this day and age, enough. that's no guarantee, Rick. <laughs> <laughs> but every time it hits him, he'll lose five seconds. He's starting with 100 seconds. He's going to have to race through this. Uh, right, OK, there's one more boss to come after this, but for this part of the challenge, he has to kill Big Weird Humpty Dumpty man, boy, girl. We're not really sure, but where's the brassiere boss? From Knight, he's got to throw through six walls. Best of luck, boss. Off you go for the second leg of the challenge. OK, we can see the time in the top centre of the screen ticking away when that gets to zero. Then the boss has failed. Trying to throw big, fat Humpty through some walls there. Is that the first wall? That's the first wall. He's got six of these walls to go through. Come on, jump in. Sit up. <laughs> OK, is that two walls he's gone through now, Rick? He's already gone through two walls, but he's trying to throw one backwards. Oh, he's he got hit there. That was, a, that was a minus five seconds. He got a hit there. That's going to take a big chunk off his clock. He's got 57 seconds left. He's only gone through two walls. He has to go through that blue part of the wall. That's exactly it. The next part is the one that looks like H's. He's already done that one. That's fantastic. That's, it. That's four walls. We need two more walls. He's got 46 seconds left. A masterful, almost boss-like display from the boss here, Rick. Yeah, yes, he has to throw this one through either the top or the bottom, through the grid-like system, and he's failing immensely. It's 32 seconds left there. We're going up the top there. Boss man, not quite as bossy as he previously was in this boss special, Rick. He grabbed it by the Brazier there to get it through, and he's got it through that one. OK, no. that's the fifth one. One more wall, but he's only got 18 seconds left. The time is living large there because the pressure's on. He's been hit, he's tied down, there's eight seconds, seven seconds. This could be courage for the boss. No, that's he's done it. it. He has done it. Done it yes. Five seconds left. The boss teases us. Once more, he completes the second leg of the challenge. Let's go down and have a walk with a cheeky little boss urchin. Well, boss, it's, uh, it's got okay so far, isn't it? Yeah, it's not going too bad. No massive problems for you? Nah, no, I think it's going pretty smooth. Right, yeah, yeah. Uh, Clothes-wise and everything, you're, you're bearing up well? 
Well, the clothes are looking fine, but I have to say, I mean, I'm a busy man and I've got a multi-millionaire company to run. And the time is ticking. Well, I, can we speed it up? I understand. I appoint you for that. to go over to your office then and uh, keep those wheels of industry well oiled. Uh, coming up in part two of the show, we have the second round of our annual footy tournament. Chris Armstrong is going to be on. Plus, we'll have the climax of the boss. And I'm sure you won't want to miss seeing that particular sight. Back in a couple of minutes. <laughs> Welcome back. Uh, today we've got the second round then of our annual Games Master Footy Tournament, an event that great footballers almost kill to get on for. Well, almost all of them. We'll reveal exactly why after we detail today's celebrity challenge. Oh, come on. You know the score by now. Eleven players, two goals, one ball. Uh, let's go. So, please welcome for the second semi-final in our footy tournament, someone who is lean, strong and very dangerous in the box, a bit like myself, Mr. Chris Armstrong. Welcome to the show, Chris. Chris Thomas. OK, Chris, I want to talk about pressure. I'm lucky my job has none. So I to turn up, talk about the rubbish and get paid massive amounts of money. How much did you go to Tottenham for again, Ian? Uh, four and a half million. Four and a half million. What is it like playing under that kind of pressure, knowing that the club spent that much money? Which, uh, knowing how much Alan Sugar doesn't like to spend money, is quite a lot. What's it like? Um, I try not to think about it when you're on the pitch. It doesn't concern me how much it costs. But um, when I first came to the club, it took me a while to start scoring goals, and then obviously it's in the papers all the time. So what kind of game are we going to hope to see from you tonight on this? Um, probably a bit dirty, a lot of two-foot tackles and uh -huh. elbows off the ball. Well. It's a pity then that our original player decided not to turn up. You may be wondering exactly what we're doing with just Chris on our own. Usually we technically like to have two footballers, but uh, Mr. Stan Collymore was due to appear on the show, but Stan's obviously got something a lot better to do, and he's so good that he hasn't even bothered to call us and tell us why he can't get on. We'd just like to wish Stan the very best in the rest of his career. Now, this happened on Have I Got News For You once, and they replaced Roy Hattersley with a tub of lard. Unfortunately, we couldn't even find a tub of lard. We have to make do with Games Master co commentator extraordinaire Rick Henderson. Yeah. Rick. Yeah. Thank you very much for stepping in the last minute. What kind of game are we going to see from you, Rick? You must be a, the favourite here. Well, I'm a football game fanatic. I'm best at all the football games, and my sort of game will be who fit up the park and score goals. Excellent. OK, while uh, Chris and Rick assume their games playing positions, I'll go up to the comedy box. And I'd like to welcome back a man whose boots I'm not fit to lick, and I have done a lot of strange things for money <laughs> in my time. Uh, sport presenting legend Jim Rosatel. Welcome back, Jim. Thank you very much. OK, we have got Chris Armstrong as Brazil, Games Master, co-commentator extraordinaire Rick Henderson playing as England. Best of luck, guys. Let's go to kick off. So it's Chris then uh, wearing the yellow of Brazil. I expect Chris to win this quite comfortably. OK, but it's England who have the first shot on goal, and that was a nervous start there from the Brazilians. England seemed to have so much time on the ball there, Jim. A brilliant effort from Rick and England uh, that uh, would have put my prediction in the, in, in the cart, really, wouldn't <laughs> it, after about 10 seconds. But here come... Oh, surely that was a that very nasty tackle. That looked bad tackle. to me there, actually, Jim. I have to say, but now it's Chris Armstrong. He's played the advantage, he? Here he comes! Oh, a great save from the England keeper there. It was seeming a Euro 96 all over again. You have to say the referee played a very good advantage there, letting the Brazilians go through, and Chris should have scored. That's a bad, bad miss early on by it's the Brazilians. Throw. Oh, I thought he was looking for the knock on it. Early pressure from Chris and Brazil here. They've got uh, Richard Rufus waiting for them in the final, of course. And I would expect the Brazilians to get on target very soon. They're dominating the match at the moment. Well, here comes Chris. He's in the box. We're going to see a show here. Oh, yeah! Oh, I thought I was in the net! I can't believe him missing that one. A I great can't... save from the keeper. He just got a touch to it. Is it going to be one of those games with all Brazilian pressure and England are going to sneak away and nick a goal? Who knows? Here comes Rick on the attack now. Yeah, but, Interesting uh... ball play. There's a good chance, this. And the Brazilian keeper. They're not actually renowned for the goalkeepers. That was a good stop, though. And, uh, not exactly the strongest shot I've ever seen, though, Jim. Not the most powerful, but it was on target, and England will take great heart from that. OK, Chris Armstrong, yet again coming down. Now we've seen a lot of good attacks. 
The final shot. Look, he's in the box. But yeah. it's in. Oh, what a great chip, Jim. That was what they were trying in training all last night. And goodness me, Chris has produced it here, and the Brazilians go one up. That's it. They'll be dancing on the streets of Rio de Janeiro tonight. And here, look at the replay, Jim. Beautiful. Exquisite. Absolutely exquisite. The keeper got up very, very high, but couldn't quite get a glove on it. No, he jumped about 40 minutes too early uh, for that one. Now it's England on the attack. They're 1-0 down. Chris Armstrong in the lead, but Rick on the attack again. And it's a good move as well, building up here for England, making a bit of progress. Sliding tackle coming in, it's a good opportunity for England, oh! great save. He couldn't hold on to it though, but the Brazilian defence, strong and resolute and clear up and build it, use it as a plumber for another attack, Jim. A lot of yellow shirts back here, and here come the Brazilians looking for the second goal that would surely seal it. Oh, that's got to be a no. penalty, Jim, surely! I thought he got the ball there, I thought he got the ball. Well, What's been what, given? What does the ref... Oh, the, well, ref, the ref, ref didn't like it at all! But he must send him off, must not he? He it's has! It's, it's off as a clear goal-scoring oh. chance! I think that's like, let's have a look, this is harsh, surely he's got the ball here, hasn't he? Well, he might just have clipped the man as well. What will Chris do here? Will it be a blaster, or will he just place it? Oh, he skied it! He skied it right over the bar there! He placed it, though, didn't he? <laughs> he did! He placed it like Waddling Pierce and Southgate <laughs> placed him in the fast for England there. Well, he scored one. He could have had many, many more, really, and that was another great opportunity for Chris, and it looks as though Chris and Brazil are in the final. I can see the referees. Look, there's Lansman, that's saying It's all over the final whistle goes. Chris Armstrong wins 1-0. He's through to the final. OK, uh, congratulations, Chris. I'm going to start off with you there. Uh, a great goal. Nice, uh, a nice lob. Was that something you were planning before the game? Yeah, I've been uh, just scoring a lot of them in practice and worked out for me today. Now, Rick. Mm -hmm. Subtlety. Yeah. Not something you'd associate with the England performance there. I'd say the sending off a major talking point. A uh, major talking point. Well, I saw the man go inside me. He was going for the goal, so he had to go down. Simple as that. There are pros and cons in this, though, and I think I've been conned by a pro. That is very, very good. Thank you very much indeed, Rick. Certainly wish Thank you more you. luck in your football career than Mr. Stan Collingworth. But for now, Let's give it up for, of course, Mr. Rick Henderson, but tonight's special guest, Mr. Chris Armstrong. Yeah. So, Chris Armstrong goes into the final against Richard Rufus next week. Still to come, the boss's final challenge. At the moment, he's furiously phoning around, trying to find out why Stan Collingwell shafted us. Think about that as we go into today's feature. <laughs> I've just received a report from Deep Space Five. Long-range sensors have picked up... Yes, I know. The Vorg. Set a course for Earth. Oh, Maximum I'll put the Vorg. kettle on then, Jean-Luc. Next week sees the release of Star Trek First Contact, the first movie starring just the next generation cast. Starfleet Captain Jean-Luc Picard finds himself up against the Federation's worst enemy, the scabby-skinned Vorg, who have used Carol Vorderman's theory of time travel to wreak havoc on the galaxy's most popular planet. Data, report. We appear to be caught in a temporal wake. Captain. Earth. The atmosphere contains high concentrations of methane, carbon monoxide, and chlorine. Life signs? Population approximately 9 billion. All Borg. I didn't know Beyond Borg had that many brothers. The producer shot additional scenes containing the Borg after test audiences complained they didn't see enough of them. So it's no surprise when, after colonizing Earth, they infiltrate the new Enterprise, giving even the crew's android data a bad case of the heebie-jeebies. I believe I am feeling... anxiety. It is an intriguing sensation. The most distracting... Yeah, I'm sure it's a fascinating experience, but perhaps you should deactivate your emotion chip for now. Good idea, sir. Done. Data, there are times that I envy you. That's just because he's got hair. Unencumbered by having to pay for expensive has-beens like William Shatner and Leonard Nimoy, and including the 20 quid I lent them, the filmmakers had oodles of cash to spend on special effects. They quite literally used it. Often the film looks more like Star Wars than Star Trek, with computers the size of slough employed to produce trouser trembling sequences like this. Quiet. <laughs> Let's rock and roll! 
With a subplot set on Earth, all the TV show's regular cast getting a good looking, and a superbly spooky Borg Queen. Watch your future's end. Yeah, nice one, love. First Contact is the most action packed of all the Trek movies. It's currently number one in the American box office charts, the fastest grossing Trek movie of all time. It's certainly much better than Cack Like Voyager or Deep Space Nine. We are not going to lose the Enterprise. Not to the Borg, not while I'm in command. Okay, if you're just uh, tuning in, I hope it was incredibly important uh, because we've only got a few minutes left. What has happened in this show, right? Guy came on in a suit, slightly fat, called himself the boss, claims he can beat any boss in the world. We picked three games at random. He did the first two, not terribly convincing, but he did it okay in the end. I moved my hands a lot throughout the show, and Rick Henderson, my co-commentator for this, tried to play football against Chris Armstrong and got beat! But he stood around to commentate for the final part of the boss. This is the final bet, the final boss, one of the hardest ones we've seen, Rick. The spider on Resident Evil. How can you help out the boss on this? Well, basically, the spider will try and flob on you, and it's evil flob, right? Evil flob, it will hurt you. OK, then, yes, we've only given the boss the Beretta. This makes this particularly tough. He's going to update the spider about eight times. If he gets hit by three flobs, the boss's challenge ends in unboss-like manner. Best of luck, boss. The third part of your challenge begins now. And there is quite literally the flobbing spider. That was three flobs at the start there. <laughs> Simultaneous. That's one flop. shot. That's the first shot on him. Excellent play there from the boss, Rick. And he managed to actually get away from the acid attack at that point. That's good. That's two. That's the third. The third shot. Oh, he's no. been hit. He's one, been hit. One hit there. He's, so he's, um, he's hit the spider three times. The spider's hit him once. That's four hits. On the flobbing spider boss there, halfway through, he's doing well. Well, I've always been afraid of spiders, but to be honest, if they fly at me, you just have to get out of the way. OK, that's the fifth hit. This is remarkable. He can still afford to get hit twice more. The boss is proving most boss-like. And the sixth hit, two more. Oh, no! The it second flob. The second flob's connected. He can only afford to have one more flob. And he's going to get two more hits. That's it. That's no, he's got him. Well done, boss. Thank you. You are the boss. Yeah. OK, we've proven that beyond the shadow of a doubt. And uh, a big, huge, important businessman, very successful, very wealthy. Mm. Why are you wearing such a cheap suit? Cheap suit? Does this look cheap to you? Yeah, rather. Oh. You know, you've got to wear a few cheap things here, haven't you? Well, with those words of wisdom then ringing in our ears, I'll refresh your memory about them. You have to wear cheap things once and again. Then uh, let us congratulate the boss. Uh, I'm certainly very glad that he has appeared on the show tonight. The guest master Gola Joyce that goes to the boss. <laughs> That's it, that's all we've got time for today. I'd like to thank you on behalf of myself at Channel 4 for giving us 30 minutes of your busy life today. On next week's show, we'll have the grand final of our footy tournament, and I'll leave you with this thought. If old age brings such great wisdom, why do granddads insist on wetting themselves? Good night. <laughs> <laughs>